All right, so now that we kind of reviewed a little bit the why of what we did, um, here's what we did. So specifically, the first thing was we needed to have a large enough battery bank to be able to run this inverter and also to run now the ability to give the owner stay at anchor longer, running the water pump, the lights, whatever he was needed to be able to stay at, at anchor or at a dock that has no AC power and try to avoid running the generator as much as possible. So we inst installed two L16 AGM batteries. Uh, in this uh, configuration, we really tried to have the batteries together, but we just couldn't make it. The owner didn't want us to actually have the batteries right together for list. And so we had a compromise where we put the two batteries like this. You'll notice L16 batteries are six volts, so we had to wire them obviously in series. Notice we actually actually heat shrinked, you know, red at the right place, red here, black here, that's the series jumpers. Um, we've got ne positive, negative on one end, positive on the other. Um, and so we've got, now this is effectively his house bank. And this one was easier because actually, oddly enough, um, it was actually came with already three battery banks. There's a port battery bank for port engine, starboard battery bank for starboard engine, and there's a house battery. So we just increased the capacity. Uh, these AGM batteries, um, ideally we'd want to have them in a box, uh, but in this instance we couldn't, so we ended up making sure there was caps, so then the thing looked short, and those batteries can't leak. So we put these big heavy-duty straps so they can't fall. You'll notice them some really good serious tie-downs. Uh, we always worry about worst-case scenario. What happens if your really big following sees the boat is pounding, you're going fast? We don't want these batteries that weigh 120 pounds to move at all. So that's one of the things we did. The next thing we did is we actually found a pretty creative place to mount the inverter. The inverter um, is right down here and um, it's going to be out of the elements, um, never, it's going to be nice and dry. And what we ended up doing is you can tell actually the inverter is actually drawing power directly from the battery bank and not from actually the DC distribution. Um, and that's really essential for an inverter charger because it's not just a load, it's also a charging and all charging circuits should be directly connected to an unswitched distribution. And so what we ended up doing is installing a dedicated fuse for the inverter, a dedicated switch for the inverter charger, and then in turn that's the DC side of the circuit. And you'll notice that the fuse is actually right at the beginning of the circuit. And also we always install a spare fuse in case the fuse blows because a class T fuse is not easy to source. And so we always leave that. It, I mean, I honestly rarely see a class T fuse blow on an inverter, but if it does happen, because it's also used not just for an inverter but a charger, it's really convenient to have for the owner to have a fuse right on board. Uh, the AC basically goes from the inverter all the way to the panel and what we did here is we divided the AC panel in two parts, a non-inverter AC panel and an inverter AC panel. The inverter AC panel is going to run the microwave, the coffee machine, the entertainment system, outlets things that the owner is maybe going to want to run off of the batteries via the inverter. And then there's what are called non-inverter loads. So like, for example, the water heater, too much power for an inverter. Um, the stovetop, too much power. All of those other devices are going to be simply run either from AC shore power or generator, but not the inverter. And then the last thing we did is installing a battery monitor. And the battery monitor uh, component of the install here is a few things. One is we have what's called a shunt. A shunt is like kind of a choke point. It allows the batteries, uh, the battery monitor to actually measure all the current that's going in and out of the batteries. So it measures current both directions. And that's really useful to know what is the loads on the battery and what is the charge rate on the batteries. And the other thing we did is we also installed the voltage sense uh, for the battery monitor directly at the batteries. Some people take shortcuts and they install them down at the DC distribution further down thinking they're being creative. But what that can do is if you ever lose one of those fuses blow, you think you have no more batteries because you look at your battery monitor and it says zero volts and you think you have no more batteries. But in effect, it's you're measuring voltage too far away from the batteries and you're just realizing that a fuse may have blown downstream. So it's really essential when you're doing a battery monitor to actually go directly at the battery for voltage sense. And that's basically uh, what we did in this engine room.